I think everybody got Python working last time, and you know it's all here at Sam's Class.info. If you start there, you go down to the Violent Python class and click that link, and then you end up here. And last time, people got through level one, where they got the basic Python work. And what I'll do is, my plan is I'm going to get you started on HTTP scanning, which will probably be pretty easy, because it's not a small step forward from port scanning you did last time. And then I want to explain why password hashes matter. I have a little talk about that. And then you'll start cracking password hashes. So uh, let me start with this HTTP part. I made a separate Mac and PC version that may be helpful for the people who have PCs. And um, so uh, remember before, let me just um, go this far for starters and put that in a file um, uh, demo dot pi. All right. So if you connect to a port on a socket and you connect to port 80, as uh, let me put in the uh, print s receive that belongs here. All right. So if I run that, it just sits there doing nothing. And we talked about this before. This is because that port is not intended to be used this way by human sending data, so it does not bother to send you a prompt telling you what to put in. Port 22 does, because it's intended to be used this way. This is what browsers use to load web pages. And what your browser does is it sends a request up to the server. So you have to duplicate that request. Now, requests can be pretty simple. Like here's, there are a few HTTP methods. Get will load a page, post will send data up to the server like a name and password, and head, which is not used that often, will just get the header information from the server, but it's a short command. So let me modify this thing to include that stuff. So after the S connect, um, it will do this. All right, now I got some extra lines, just get rid of them. All right, so what this is going to do is connect to the server on port 80 and then send this two lines, head slash HTTP 1.1, then a carriage return, which you write with backslash n, that's a convention for a lot of languages, and then you have to give it the host name, which is going to be the same target again. This is the most popular version of HTTP used on the web, and that will send a request to the server that should give me an answer, so when I run that, I get an answer. And this is the header. Um, you don't see it in your browser, but every web page starts with a header, and it's really not all that important. It tells you the date and the time and um, what type of content you'll accept, uh, which you'll see having some effect later. Um, all right, so that's what we've got here. Now, if you, um, so now, let's try hacking into something. So here's a form you can log in. If you put in like foo and a password of bar, I'm going to bring that bigger, All right, and you log in, it's going to complain and said you entered foo and bar, but you're, that's still not a good password, so you're rejected, which is fine. Now, I find an enormous number of students stop when at this point and worry about what the right password is, but that's not the issue right now. The issue is, how did that happen? Somehow it took my name and password and it sent it up to the server. It would be nice to know how it did that, and you can... There are tools like Wireshark and Network Sniffer where you can look at the raw network packets, but you don't even need it. There's a tool built into um, the browser. Um, this is Chrome. So I should be able to find developer tools. Where the heck are they? View developer developer tools. Okay. Either view developer developer tools. These are here so that people who are writing websites can debug them. And you, so if you go here, I'm about to log in again, there's a network tab here. And if you log in, it will show you the network requests here. And even over on the end, it will show you information like how long it took to do each step, which is something you might do to, to debug your page if your page is loading slowly. Um, but all I care about here is how this login happened. And if you click on the login.php uh, request here, there are two things that happen. There's a request and a response. And here it shows it to you in some sort of uh, tidy format to try to make it easier to read, which I don't care about. I want to see what it really did. So I'm going to look at the request headers in view source. This is exactly what it really sent to the server. And you see the first part is very much like what happened with the head request. You got a post, then you specify the, the path to the particular file on the server you're trying to contact, then the version of HTTP, and then the host name. 
Uh, so that is what I have to send in order to log in. And a lot of this is like not very interesting. The only thing that really matters is the content length, which has, tells it how many bytes of data I'm going to send. And then the content type is going to come back later. Now there are cookies down here. Um, which in fact, yeah, okay, never mind, I'll cope with it. I'm gonna have to change my password now. <laughs> anyway, uh, there are cookies down here, but here's the form data. So let me show you how to send this programmatically. You highlight all this stuff and copy it. Just the whole thing. This is a good policy to take. I'm gonna completely duplicate what my browser did. So I copy all that junk. Now, you add that to your script. So, um, let's uh, copy demo to http1.py and now nano that. Uh, by the way, when you're doing something complicated, I highly recommend doing it with a whole series of versions. Version 1, version 2, version 3, because frequently something bad happens and you have to go back a couple versions to pick up back when you had something that worked. So now instead of sending this head stuff, I'm going to send something called request. And here's one of the many cool things about Python. You can make a multiple line string with three quotes. Mm -hmm. Put in three quotes, paste in all that junk, and press enter a couple times and put in three more quotes again. And that gives you um, all the header information of the request you sent. Now what's missing is the data. And the data is over here in developer tools. And I can view source for that. This is how the data is sent. You have two carriage returns. And then you just have u equals username and ampersand p equals password. So that's the stuff I need to copy and put in here before these quotes. All right, so now that is the request that will try to log in as foo and bar. I need to send that instead of all this stuff. So I just get rid of all this literal text I sent and put in request. And this should try to log in. Let's see what happens. So Python, HTTP1, and it tries to log in. And it gives me, by the way, this status code is really important. 200 is good. 200 means the server understood your request and is providing what you asked for. There are other errors like 404 if it can't find the request, and 302 if it moved to another place, and so on. Um, so this means it understood my request, and it gave me the header again. But all this, I can't read it, which is uh, irritating. But the reason this happens is to make the internet faster. Um, your browser, if you, it told me it's encoded with zip. It zipped the data before sending it to me, and this is zipped data. Now, I could try to figure out how to unzip it, but that's annoying. What I'd rather do is just tell the server to give it to me straight instead of zipping it. And that you can do by just telling it, up here I told it that I would accept um, text or zipped text someplace in this mess, except encoding, zip inflate, and all that jazz. So let's just get rid of that. I don't want to accept zipped or, in, or deflated data. I just won't tell it what I'll accept, and then it's going to have to just give me straight text because I'm not really a browser. I'm just a command line tool. And so now I get the source code. And if you know web pages, they're made with this HTML language. But you can read it. You edit it through and bar, credentials rejected. So now I've just made a rotten little text-only browser in Python, which in itself is not much of an accomplishment. But this is going to make it easy to hack into things. But why I'm doing it, of course, so if you go back to the page here. Um, so you see, do all this jazz, get that stuff working. Here's the instructions to do what I just did. And when you're done, you'll be able to get um, where I am here, where you're able to get the message that your password is no good. Now, I would like to try a whole list of names and passwords to hack into a website. So instead of having foo and bar be fixed data, I want to put them in a variable so I can vary them later. So I'm going to modify this code here. I'm just, uh, I guess I'll just modify the existing one. All right, so right now I have the password, name and password down here like that. So I'm going to put them up here in variables instead. So username equals foo, password equals bar. And then down here, uh, instead of putting it in literally, I'm going to end this here. All right, and I'm going to call this uh, request one, and then I'm going to have another part, which because there's going to be one in the middle later, I'm going to call request three equals um, 
Okay, so it is u equals plus username plus ampersand p equals plus uh, password. There, and that should amount to the same thing. And now when I send it, I send request plus request three. So I just broke it into two pieces so I could make one part vary. So this should have the same result as the last one, unless I made a mistake, which is entirely possible, of course. So, by the way, one fundamental rule of programming I didn't tell you is the most, there are two mistakes beginning programmers make that mess up their life. The first one is they read the problem and immediately just start typing, instead of planning first. Professional, professional programmers spend 80% of their time planning before they write any code at all. Because if you have a project that is at all big and complicated, your first idea of how to do it will turn out not to be the right way and you'll waste all your time coding stuff. But that's not, these little puzzles here, that's not really an issue. But what is an issue is this, you don't write very much at once. Write just a couple lines and test it. Write a couple more and test it, because if you type a whole page of stuff and it doesn't work, you don't know where your mistake is. So when you're beginning, make small changes and test it often. It's much faster in the long run. So anyway, here I am, I broke it somehow. Request three, or request is not defined, that's right. I changed request to request one up here and then I needed to change it when I referred to it down here, so there's the mistake. If I made a three or four changes, I usually made a mistake. All right, and now I send it, and I'm getting, it times out, okay? Um, so let's see if I can figure out what the problem is, or maybe you folks can see it. Um, oh, I have u equals, and down here I have another u equals. I need to make up my mind and have it one place or the other, but not both. I think I'll leave it down here, it looks a little more natural. But if you have two u equals, then the request is going to be incorrectly formatted, and it won't work. There we are. So now I'm again back to where I was. I can now send this request to the server, and the server will tell me my credentials are rejected. So now I would like to try other names and passwords, now that they're in variables. So let's try this. For example, I might want to try root and say password. And now I'm going to find another problem. If I run this one, again, it just hangs up on me. And the reason it hangs up on me is because I need to fix the content length. The content length here is how many characters are in what you sent. And this was for a username of foo and a password of bar. And now my username and password are longer. So I have to calculate the actual length. And I can calculate it up here if I like, say uh, length is uh, it's u equals, which for two, then the username, ampersand p equals, and then the password, so there are five extra characters, plus the length of the username, plus the length of the password. That's what the length is. Now, I need to put that in instead of this 11. So I need to break it here, and then leave the carriage return preserved there, and call this request2. Okay, so now I have request1, and then a number, and then request2, and then request3. And one thing that can mess you up in Python, and I remember there's one student that was messing them up before, there's a difference between numbers and characters. String variables have letters, numbers you can do math on. And the way I did it now, this thing up here is a, a number. I did math on it. It's going to have to be a string for me to print it in the middle of this string, so you make it a string like this. So it's going to calculate the number, and then instead of interpreting it as the number 11, it's going to make the string 1, 1, or 15, or whatever it is. So now, that's my length, and so now what I have to send is request 1 plus request 2, uh, no, plus length, plus request 2. I think I've got that right. If I've got it wrong, well, no, because it won't work. But I think that's right. Request one, then the length, then request two, then request three. That should do it. Let's see if that works. And okay, I fouled up a string, HTTP one. Um, maybe I have to do this. Let's try that then. I'm going to have to look at my instructions which happens now and then. Okay, still doesn't like it. Okay, let me take a look at my instructions, see how I did it there. Um, root and tour, changing content length. And where's the, ah, uh, there, string of len plus username. Well, now, 
That looks a lot like what I did. All right, that works. What did I do that's wrong? Um, in this line. Well, I put in more quotes, but I thought that might help. Five plus length of username plus password. Well, it's, you know, this is gonna annoy me if it's true, but maybe I have to put the five at the end. We'll just see. There is, see, proper, languages that are strict, like C, force you to declare every variable and say what it is. This is an integer, this is floating point. Python figures it out, which means it guesses. <laughs> um, so it, you can actually end up in trouble that way. Let's see if that works. He still doesn't like it. Bad operand. Oh, it's way down there. Oh, I have two pluses. Oh, thank you. You guys are seeing what I didn't see. All the things I'm writing here are fine. The mistake is down here. And uh, I have two pluses here. Thank you. All right. That's what I come for not reading the error message carefully. It was complaining down here, not up there. All right, let's see if it works now. It does work, okay. And that's the right answer, root and password, so now I get the successful login message. So if you know how to do that, you can now hack into my other pages here. So if you go down here, um, there's some examples of how to loop. Here's how you loop through um, text values if you want to. You just have a list of them, and then it will just print them or do whatever you want to them. So that's how you can loop through a bunch of text. Here's how you loop through a bunch of numbers. Range 1 to 5, it will now print from 1 to 4. It doesn't include the last value. It's all the numbers up to just before the last value. And so now, you can break into this form. Username and PIN. I give you some information about the username and some information about the password, and you should be able to try them all and find which one works. Um, and I added a couple of hints. And then there's another one down here that is where you have even less information about what the rules are for logging in, and you can still break in, probably without a lot of difficulty. So, so give that stuff a try. I'll wander around and help people. And let me just save this in case anybody wants to see it later. HTTP.